This is uh, a hardware interface created by Microsoft that um, they were generous en enough to loan to the lab, or to, to donate to the lab, actually, so that we could develop cool things for it. So this is to get you interested in the idea of multi-touch. So anytime you select a point, um, it begins generating particles. And you'll notice they're affected by gravity and physics. And as we throw our fingers into the air, they're affected by else. Our, our, our velocity. And the cool thing about this display is it really doesn't matter how many fingers we put on it. The computer just slows down. Yeah, the computer is what's slowing down, not the interface. It's continuously tracking all of our all of our finger touches and our velocity. And all of you could put your hands on here. I mean, as many people as we could squeeze around it. And it would keep recognizing unique ideas for each of the IDs for each of those touch points, um, which gives us a much wider space for interacting with uh, visual representations of data like the dust and magnets that we were showing up before. And this is also created in processing. This, uh, unlike the dust and magnets, is, is pretty much just for fun. Uh, but it's colorful, and uh, if anybody wants to swipe across it, feel free. Don't feel obligated. But <laughs> it's going to get addicting. Uh. <laughs> Um, so some of you have seen this, but um, for the benefit of the camera, I'll also show off the, the map application uh, again. Um, so this is uh, another application that we're working on for the perceptive pixel interface. So we call this space sketch. Um, and what we're looking at here is sketch-based interaction with geospatial data. So. Um, here you'll recognize we have kind of a familiar map of the city of Atlanta. Um, this is a Google Maps uh, tile set, although you can use OpenStreetMap or anything else. But we have kind of your panning capability to move around. We can uh, squeeze to zoom out and kind of expand to move in. We actually have a pretty nice degree of detail here. Um, so the reason that we're exploring this in a multi-touch and sketch-based uh, space is because it affords a, a set of naturalist in interactions that are tougher uh, using a query-based interface or using a desktop. Right? So if we wanted to start off kind of where we are now um, at Tech Square, we can pretty easily just sketch around it and say this is where we're starting because this is where we are now. And if we wanted to explore the city of Atlanta, let's say we've heard about Little Five Points. Um, it's over here, Little Five, but we're not really certain how to get there. Um, we can look at the map and begin to get a sense for this. Now, what most people would do at this point would probably be to type into Bing Maps or Google Maps and just be given turn-by-turn -turn directions. But um, let's say that there's a set of data points that you care about. Um, for the city of Atlanta, what we have is crime. Uh, and you, know, you could use any number of other data sets, elevation, green space, or just walkability. Um, but the city of Atlanta um, actually publishes this, uh, so we have freely avail available crime data. And as a pedestrian, this might be something that we care about. Now, if we look at the data like this, it's a little bit overwhelming, and it's difficult to make decisions. I mean, if we, we can see that between these two points, there are crimes. But how does that compare to some of the other areas? Um, so kind of backing out of that, using this um, interface, we can just draw from our start to our endpoint. And it'll recognize the, the path that we asked for and construct uh, the shortest path between them. Now you'll notice that there's a bit of a difference in the thickness and the um, color density for the, um, uh, for the path that I've created. And that's actually generated by the crime uh, around the path. So the areas that are thicker and are a little bit darker are the areas that actually have a little bit more crime. So if we wanted to, let's say, avoid this place that's a little bit thicker, we can, um, because it's a sketch-based interface, pretty easily construct a new path and say, let's go that way. Or we can go for a detour if we wanted to visit somebody or construct a new path altogether. Um, so it affords a lot of the interaction that we would have with just using a big sheet of paper, but it's driven by data. Um, and there are a few other things that we could do that are not all that different from what we might do on paper, but are a lot easier in a system like this. So let's say once we get to little five points, we want to explore the area, but we don't know that much about it. So let's say I'm willing to walk about as far as the highway, um, so I can ask the system to show me what's within walking distance from that point, that's roughly the same distance as the highway, and it'll show me all the possible routes. And then use the same data to uh, shade the, the paths. 
Um, similarly, if, say, you're staying at a conference hotel or you're just dropped into the middle of a city and you want to go for a walk around there, you can then construct these paths pretty similarly. Um, so this allows us to kind of look at some of these areas kind of in comparison. Um, you can imagine this being useful for drop-off points along the MARTA or subway stations in another city. Um, and one of the things that we can also do um, is look at some of the areas. So um, if we noticed, say, um, okay, we're passing by the Thumbs Up Diner. I definitely want to go there. Show me all the paths that take me by there. So we can draw a border around that. And this shows me all the paths that my initial query constructed that pass by that diner and then go to other places. Um, now we can also construct uh, boundaries around much larger regions. And the system will do a couple of things. It'll keep shading areas pa that pass through that, but it'll also give this kind of sketchy shading uh, based upon the number of crimes that have occurred there, where things that have fewer crimes are closer to a, a yellow, and things that have more crimes are shaded with a red encoding. And then we can kind of begin to parcel up the map by neighborhoods using the same type of techniques. And then if we wanted to remember, like, oh, there's Central Park, um, you can just annotate directly on the, the map without creating additional boundaries. Okay? So all the power of paper, but with some computational horsepower uh, underneath as well. Um, so we're also looking at ways to explore other types of data. So I said before this was crime. Uh, you might care a lot more about, say, homicides uh, than auto theft. So we can actually change the filtering for that uh, and affect the, um, uh, the, the thickness of the line renderings. You can also change the threshold. Right now it, it's sensitive to crime that's within about 200 meters of the path. And it counts things that are closer to the path a little bit higher than things far away. But you can also increase or decrease that difference. So there is, there is some, some tuning available. Um, but the, the major point is the interaction through drawing and erasing uh, components on the map.